Okay, so we have this crystal structure. In fact, if you go get a, a piece of salt right now and you look at it, you'll find that it makes this cube shape. And that originates in the shape of the actual uh, atomic interactions. Okay, um, so what what's happening here is the sodium is going to give up its electrons. So when it does, it it makes Na plus, so giving up a negative charge produces a cation. Uh, and then that ca that electron can go react with a chlorine atom. And when it does, it produces the ion Cl minus. Okay? And so you, you want to have the sodium ion and the chlorine ion in close proximity to each other because a positive and a negative charge is always going to be attracted. So Cl- is shown here in green in the structure, and Na- is shown in pink. Um, on the other hand, it's sometimes a good thing to see the actual connections. So if we look here um, in the center of this, this lattice on the bottom, we see the, the pinkly colored sodium ion and it happens to be it happens to be attached or like connected to six different chlorine atoms so I'm going to highlight the bonds the interactions here but if we expanded this lattice out and looked at what say this atom was attached to you would find that there's actually six different um, chlorine atoms affiliated with each sodium as well so each sodium in the pink has six chlorine, and each uh, green chlorine atom has six sodium. So you, you would create a ratio of six Na's for every six Cl's. Now when we write the chemical formula, we want to write it in the sort of least common denominator format. So six and six um, are both divisible by each other, and when you do, you get one sodium and one chlorine. So the formula is correctly written as NaCl. And we can also tell that that's going to be the formula because 1 plus and 1 minus cancel each other out. So I only need one sodium and one chlorine to make that into uh, you know, a balanced compound. Oops, too far. All right, so sometimes elements um, want to lose more than one electron. Let's say, for instance, we have magnesium, which is in group 2, so it has two valence electrons. Um, that means we have two options here. Either magnesium can give up two electrons to become similar to the element neon, so it's isoelectronic with neon, or it could take six electrons to become like argon. So we have to ask ourselves, which way is simpler? And the answer to that is that taking six electrons is really difficult, but, you know, but giving up two electrons is comparatively simple. We can use the same kind of analysis um, Okay, so when, when magnesium gives up two electrons, it's, it's going to be left with two extra protons, so we would say Mg2+, and those two electrons are going to go somewhere else. They go to some other element, you know, who knows where, but it's somewhere. Um, when we're drawing aluminum structure, we would put the element in the center and then write the number of valence electrons, and since aluminum is in group 13, it has three valence electrons. When, oops, hold on, what is going on? Okay, so when aluminum ionizes, it wants to it wants to become isoelectronic with a noble gas. So. Sorry, my iPad is really messing up today. So 
that means uh, it wants to it wants to be able to transform from three valence electrons to either gaining five, so it becomes like um, argon, or losing these three to become like neon. And so this question here says aluminum and fluorine will react to form ALF3. Let's see if we can see why that might be. So I have aluminum with um, three valence electrons still. Fluorine is in group 17, so that means I'm going to put seven valence electrons like that. Okay, so one of these valence electrons on the fluorine can be transferred pretty easily to fill up this space. So, I'm sorry, one of these valence on the aluminum gets transferred to the fluorine. But that means that aluminum still has two more, um, like, extra electrons that it needs to get rid of. So... I can't fit the... Okay, so here's our two more electrons, um, places where electrons can go, rather. So we can put one on this fluorine and one on this fluorine. And so altogether, the aluminum would have given up three electrons, so that means it has three more protons than it has electrons. And I have these three... Um, fluorine atoms all with eight electrons because they each absorbed one so that means it has a negative charge okay so we can use the same logic here so I, I look at lithium and it happens to be on the first group so that means it has one valence electron I would draw it like that and we're trying to pair it with fluoride so fluorine is fluoride in a complex so I would write it like that, seven valence electrons. And so we know that the lithium wants to give up one. It just happens that the fluorine wants to accept one. So, okay, so this means if lithium needs to give up one electron and fluorine needs to accept one electron, then the lithium, oops, let's change the color. Lithium would become Li plus. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Li plus and the fluorine would become F minus, and that means I only need one of each one. So my formula would be LIF. Um, capitalization matters here. The first letter of each element is capitalized, and the second one is always lowercase. So I would never write this. This is three separate elements, um, not two. So don't do that. Okay. So for the next one, it's potassium. The symbol for potassium is K. And then it says phosphide. IDE signifies that it's just an element. So I look at the first part, and I try to figure out which element it is. And phosphide, phosphorus is the, um, phosphide is phosphorus. And so I look on there, and it turns out that, um, let's see. We're going to do phosphorus and green actually. And so it turns out that potassium is in group one, so that means it's got one valence electron. And the phosphorus is in group 15, so that means it's got to have five valence electrons, which look like that. Okay, so I can see right away that I can see right away that one of these can go here, but that doesn't make phosphorus entirely happy because it still has like two blank spaces. So I'm gonna I'm gonna collect a couple more Ks to put in. Put them in right there. So altogether we need three different Ks in order to give enough electrons to phosphorus so it will have eight. So if I have three Ks so if I have three Ks, I would write that in the formula as K with a subscript of three, followed by a P. We always write the cation first, so it's just like reading from left to right on the periodic table, and K comes um, first from left to right, so we can write that one first. Um, okay, so I want you to go in a top hat and answer this question.